So as the world's speeding up with computers and everything going breakneck speed, I'm going the opposite way. I'm trying to slow down and use less and make everything more simple. I'm John. Lots of people for many years have called me John the Bus because I lived in a bus for 16 years. People say, John, oh yeah, John, John who? John the Bus. Oh, I know the guy. The nickname stuck. And after I sold the bus, I'm still called John the Bus. <laughs> I've got a fire engine now, and nobody calls me John the Fire Engine. <laughs> don't watch television, don't go to football matches. There's lots of things I don't do, so I find other things to do. Road protest in Canada, that was a good one. We were trying to save the forest from destruction. So I constructed a basket on the end of a 90-foot log. There was a 500-foot drop beneath me, but you manage, you have to. <laughs> I guess I've been doing what I've been doing most of my life. I like making things. I still do, I haven't tired from it. When I was a child, if I wanted something, you have to make it. So if you want a go-kart, go and make one. If you want a treehouse, go and make it. When I was 18, I started away on a boat. I got offered a job and ended up having six years at sea in the Merchant Navy. Met lots of interesting people and developed a lot of skills. The sea career ended when I broke my back in 1985, and that was when I bought the bus. Travelled around for many years all over the country, festivals and farms, and, and ended up in the lay bar across the road here for four years, and then got this place. My living space is a roof of an old factory that's several centuries old, and I've made use of every nook and cranny. Most people say Aladdin's cave, whatever that means. In a way, we're like goldfish, that you grow to the size of your environment. I might have something on the table for ages, and think, oh, that's nice, I like that, but I don't know what to do with it. And one day, you turn it upside down, and an idea just pops into your head. Uh, all this stuff up here is all recycled junk. Um, it's part of a spaceship. I didn't think spaceships were allowed to fly it, but they do. <laughs> it's in there cooking. It's looking very nice. I just hope it's hot enough. I find beauty everywhere, really. It's amazing how you can look at something that's rubbish that most people condemn straight away without any hesitation and give a little bit of thought. And suddenly there's, oh, I know what you could do with that. And that's what I find inspiring, is the, is the endless possibilities of making good out of something that's, that's broken. That's how you twist the spanner. And the more broken it is, the more I want to fix it. Uh, a bit like my fire engine. Oop. Hopefully it won't fall over. There we go. Ugh. Wow. It's a very friendly, happy fire engine. It's like out of a children's picture book. Bought by Billy Smart in 1966 for his circus. Formed in that for many years. Then it went into a hedge and sadly got uh, neglected for a while. I was just going to finish the front off and uh, finish the back and give it a coat of paint. If it had already been done up, I wouldn't have felt the same way about it. Because it had a tree growing out of it and flat tyres. I thought, yeah, that's, that looks lovely. <laughs> I've seen some cars in woods that are covered in moss and they're an ecosystem in themselves, so it's beautiful to watch. Spiders spinning webs in, in amongst those of barbed wire. It's a wonderful metamorphosis, I think, of how nature dismantles what we build. It does it in a very beautiful way. Which is what made me pick up a pencil and start drawing. I don't like spirit levels and set squares, which is what I was told as a child to do, to have everything in grid form. I don't do grid forms. I work with nature's patterns. It's a spark, uh, I call it the invisible universe. All the things we can't see. That's the key for the time machine. You can get more time by turning the tap on. And uh, that goes in the back there somewhere. It works using the imagination. It's kind of a key component, that is. You can go anywhere you like in it. I did end up in a castle once, and I had some explaining to do, because I was trying to tell them I'm from the future, and they, they didn't like it. This is all in a dream, of course. But the time machine was real, in my dream. And I've had dreams of the planet healing our wounds. These visions of the cities covered in ivy and forests. It's a beautiful planet we live on. 
I think everything is becoming more confusing exponentially as far as the human race goes. We're pushing ourselves away from nature. We're denying we're anything to do with nature. And I feel we're everything to do with nature. We're part of the planet. We're all from outer space originally. We're all space dust.